Hi everyone, my name is Zach and in this video we will take a look at 20 tips to speed up UV mapping in Blender. We will use Blender 2.79, but I guess most of the things are also working in previous versions of Blender. Also, I guess there are many, many other cool tricks for UV mapping in Blender, but I just want to show you tricks that I've used a lot and that I know which are pretty helpful for me and I think they will be helpful for you as well. Before we start, two things. I'm using the Pi Menus add-on. This is this circular shaped menu which appears when I'm switching between edit or object mode for example. You can enable this in the user preferences. You don't have to download anything else. And I'm also using the Flatty Light theme which you also can enable in the user preferences. So please don't ask me about that. Yeah, and if you want to get notified for future videos, just enable the bell under this video. And if you find this video useful and want to support my channel, check out my Gumwood page. Link in the video description below. All right, without further words, let's get started. Tip number one, generate UVs. For UV unwrapping, we need the UV image editor and the 3D viewport, just to mention this. And now let's hit for the tool shelf and down here we have the operator panel. This we will also need in this video. And generate UVs basically means if you add a new object, for example a cube, you can now check this generate UVs option down here and that will automatically generate the UV map for this specific object. So let's check some other objects like the cylinder as you can see and even the monkey Suzanne has a UV map now. How cool is that? <laughs> Tip number two, mark and clear seam and UV unwrap shortcuts. Here we can see a little monster dude, which I've created during my last character workshop. From time to time, I hold Blender workshops here in Germany. And this is the result of the last workshop. And here I just want to quickly show you the main shortcuts we will use. The one is for adding a seam. Let's select the edge selection. And if you have select one or more edges, press Ctrl E and click on mark seam. If you want to remove a seam, you can select them, press Ctrl E again, clear seam, and then this seam is gone. And if you want to unwrap the whole model, press A to select everything, U and then unwrap. Besides these shortcuts, you find this also over here under shading UVs, UVs. Tip number three, smart UV project. Sometimes you have models with very bad topology. In this case, for example, we have a scanned skirt and I already would use the poly count with a decimate modifier. And if I would use this in games or animations, then certainly I had to create a retopology object with a nice topology and then UV mapping and so on is easy. But in this case, it's nearly impossible to create a UV map. You can see we have a lot of triangles here. But if we just want to use this and bake some ambient occlusion maps or quickly paint on the surface, we can create a not so nice looking UV map but a UV map we can work with. For this, I'm now in edit mode, press U for unwrapping and here I choose smart UV project. Now I can define an angle limit. So basically we define the angle where the edges should be split. And then we have this island margin, which basically defines the space between the islands and the rest we leave as it is. And then I hit okay. And now you can see we have this UV map. If this is not what you like, you always can press U again, smart UV project, change the value here for angle limit and try it again. For example, if I make it quite low. So, and now you can see we have much more islands than before. So the bigger the angle, the less islands you have, but there is more stretching and more errors, I guess. And the lower the angle, the more islands you have, but with less stretching and so on. Also, this is pretty useful if you import some CAD models from buildings, for example. They always have an ugly topology and this smart UV project can save your butt if you just want to put some textures on the walls and so on. Tip number four, project from view. This is also pretty helpful. For example, if you want to add some logos or whatever to an object, then we can select this. 
select a few faces like this here and then we take a look from the front here and then we press U and project from view. Then basically what we will see here will be projected as UV map over here. And after a few other tips, I will show you how to put this to good use. Tip number five, live unwrap. This is one of the coolest tips. Let's switch over to edit mode, go to options and here I enable live unwrap. That means after I've unwrapped the model the first time, I press U and unwrap. And from now on, if I add a seam, let's cut off the arm here, for example, control E mark seam, then it will unwrap the model automatically. That means you will save the step by pressing U unwrap all the times when you want to update your UV map. Tip number six, tag seam. We can save us even more steps. Let's switch to options again. Live unwrap is still enabled and under edge select mode, we can select tag seam. That means every time I press control and right click on an edge, it will be automatically tagged as seam. And if you control right click on this again, the seam will be removed. And there's a other cool trick. For example, if I right click on this and then hold down control, right click on this edge here, it will connect the first selected edge with the shortest way to the next selected edge and automatically tag this as seam. And if you combine this with live unwrap, you can unwrap your model pretty quickly. Tip number seven, keep UV and edit mode mesh selection in sync. What I find pretty annoying in UV mapping is that you only can see the UV map if you select the certain areas over here at the mesh, as you can see. But it would be pretty cool if we have this live unwrap and tag seam enabled to see what happens over here. And we can do this by enabling this little button here, keep UV and edit mode mesh selection in sync. And now if I select something here, it will automatically be selected over here and the other way around. So, and if you have tag seam and live unwrap enabled, then this is even cooler. So for example, let's select this here, mark seam, and then you can see automatically what happens over here. So you can see how quick you can add your seams and automatically see what happens over here in the UV image editor with your UV map. Then control right click on this here, for example, to remove this, or simply select this two here, press control E, mark seam, and in this way, you can pretty quick unwrap your whole model. Tip number eight, mirror seams. What I can't really find in Blender is a way to simply mirror the seams from one side to the other. Maybe there's an add-on for this, I don't know, but I find a quick workaround to do this. So on this model, you can see I have seams only on one side of the mesh. And now I want to copy all the seams to the other side. Now simply select one edge, which is marked as seam, press shift G for the select similar menu and choose seams. Now, as you can see, all seams on the model are selected. Now down here under select, we choose mirror. Now it tries to mirror the selection. As you can see, eight edges are failed. That means if the model is not 100% symmetrically, it may happen that it can't mirror everything perfectly. But as you can see, this looks quite good. And now we simply can mark this as seam. And in this way, we have mirrored the selection. Certainly this only works if you have a symmetrical object. Now let's hit U, unwrap. Yeah, and as you can see, this looks quite good. Tip number nine, set up the island margin. The island margin is basically the space between the different islands. So if I unwrap this by pressing U unwrap, we have this margin value down here in the operator panel in the tool shelf. And if I increase this, you can see the space between the islands will be bigger. Tip number 10, change unwrap method. So if we add Suzanne and don't enable this generate UVs, let's switch over to edit mode, enable live unwrap, tag seam. Let's unwrap this once. Also, I keep UV and 3D viewport in sync. And now if I add the seams, 
you can see at some point something strange is happening. Although this object is 100% symmetrically, as far as I can tell, you can see this UV map is somehow distorted. This side is smaller than the other, although everything should be perfectly symmetrical. And if this is happening, let's select everything and press U unwrap again. And then down here in the operator panel under method, we change the method to confirmal. And as you can see now, this looks perfectly fine. Tip number 11, island selection. If you have unwrapped your model and now want to place all these islands on your UV map, it's pretty handy to select complete islands. And there are two ways to do it. The one way is simply moving your mouse cursor over one island and press L. And if you want to select multiple islands, press Shift L. Now you can edit them. Or you simply enable down here the island selection. With right click, now you can select the whole islands. Or with Shift right click, you can select multiple islands. But take care, this does not work if you have this sync option down here enabled. If I now press L, you can see I get an error and I don't have this island selection method here anymore. Keep that in mind if this option does not show up. Tip number 12, protect islands. Let's assume you have unwrapped your model and placed all the islands on your UV map. And now you want to change small things like you have added some geometry to your object and need to unwrap this, or you want to change the UV map of a certain area like the hand. And then if I press U unwrap again, then Blender will calculate the islands again and place them somewhere and you can see all your work is destroyed. But you can protect your islands. So simply select all the islands you want to protect. and then press P for pinning them. Now you can see all the vertices are marked red. And if I now select everything here, press U, unwrap again, you can see only the hands will be unwrapped again. And if you wanna remove the pin, simply select all the vertices which are pinned, press Alt P. Tip number 13, UV sculpt. Did you know that you have a sculpt mode in the UV image editor? So press T, under options you have UV sculpt, you can enable this and now you can move the vertices around. And if you go to tools, you also have some options like the radio, the strings, lock borders, which is enabled right now. You can see I can't move the borders around, but if I disable this, I can move them around. So this is perfect if you have some stretch in your UV map and wanna correct the stretch. You also have some other cool brushes like the Relax brush. It's like the Smooth brush in Sculpt mode. Or the Pinch brush. As you can see, it behaves like this. So if you want to make some manual adjustments to your UV map, this is pretty helpful. Tip number 14, show stretching. So one of the goals for creating a good UV map is that the proportions and scaling of one face on the UV map should look basically the same as on the 3D model. And also in relationship to the other faces on the UV map, it should have the same proportions. So for example, if I make this really big and the rest really small, then the texture has much better quality in this area than on this area here. So and there's a cool way to show you how much your model is stretched. So I press N and over here we can enable the stretch. And then we have two options, angle. This basically shows how much one face is stretched in relationship to the original face on the 3D model. You can see if it's dark blue, then this is pretty good. And the more green, yellow, orange, and red this will be, the further it gets, as you can see. So if everything is nearly blue, as you can see here, this is pretty good. And then we have this area stretch. This basically compares the size of all the faces here. So if one face in relationship to all the other faces is much bigger here than it is on the 3D model, you can see it will be colored in red. And red is always bad. Blue is very nice. So you can see, for example, this area here is much smaller on the UV map than it is on the 3D model, for example. 
And another good thing to see it, if you, for example, scale one island much bigger than the other islands, you can see how this will be colored in green, yellow, orange, and red. So in general, the goal is to keep all the islands in the same size, except you want to have a higher resolution on a certain area like the face, for example. Then you should scale this island bigger. Then you have now a higher resolution on this area and a lower resolution on the rest. And certainly you should take care that none of the islands are overlapping. Tip number 15, average island scale. Now let's get back to this example here. I've scaled the face much bigger than the rest. And now I want to scale it down again so that it has the real size. And it's pretty hard to estimate this. So I select everything, press T and here under tools, UV tools, I click on average island scale. And now you can see everything has the right size in relationship to each other. Tip number 16, live unwrap UV image editor. So this might be a little bit confusing because we have two options with the same name doing two different things. So we already know the option live unwrap. We can enable over here in the tool shelf of the 3D viewport. But if I press T over in the UV image editor under options, we also have a live unwrap option. But as you can see, if I enable this, this will not automatically be enabled. So these are two different things. And this live unwrap is also pretty cool. And now let's select everything and disable the syncing here. And now I select some of the corner points of one island and press P for pinning. And now with this live unwrap enabled, I can select the pins and by hitting G, I can move them around. And as you can see, this island is now pinned on these edges. And if I move these pinned points, you can see how this is sticking together. Certainly you can add and remove as many pins as you like. With Alt P, you can clear the pins. And in this way, it's pretty easy to adjust islands quickly if you have some stretching in there. Tip number 17, UV grid texture. So if you're done with your UV map and you can't really understand the stretching and just wanna see if your UV map works, you can add a new texture down here under new, call this whatever you like, change the resolution if you like, and then down here under generate type, we can add this UV grid. And now you can see it creates this checkered texture. And now we want to view it on the model. And for this, simply add a new material on the surface behind color. I press on this dot, choose image texture. And here we take a look in the image library and we choose this UV grid texture we just added here. Then let's switch over to material viewport shading. And now we can see this texture on the model. And if all these squares are nearly the same size, and if you don't have ugly stretching in some areas, then you did a good job. For example, here you can see some weird behavior in this texture. So I had to change something here. But in general, this looks quite okay, I would say. Tip number 18, multiple UV maps. Did you know that you can create more than one UV map for your object? And this can be quite handy. So we have one main UV map here, and now I wanna add my logo on his belly. And for this, I create a second UV map. Let's switch over to object data, UV maps. And here you can see this is a standard UV map. And now let's hit the plus button. Let's call this logo. And now let's create another UV map. You can see it copied automatically the UV map from the first UV map, but I only need a UV map for the belly. So let's select everything, scale this down to zero. That means I can move this one dot around. And now I select the belly with the face selection. And now this project from view method will be used again, which I showed you in an earlier tip. So I press U, project from view. Now I can scale this if I like. And as you can see, now I have this exact projection over here and there I will project my logo on. So let's add the node editor over here. 
I quickly switched over to material viewport shading and here I have a very simple shader. And now I want to add my logo. So I drag and drop it from an external folder into the node editor, then it will automatically create this image texture. Also, I quickly add the texture of this dinosaur thing and connect it with the diffuse shader. And now you can see since I have two UV maps, I have to select the UV map over here, which will show up in the viewport. And now we have to define which UV map, which texture should use. So let's hit Shift A, input UV map. For the top one, we simply use our standard UV map, connect this with vector. Then I duplicate this and choose the logo one, connect this. And now we need to mix those two textures. So let's go to color, mix RGB, plug both in there. And as mix factor, I choose the alpha value from my logo. And as you can see now, my logo is only viewed on the second UV map. And certainly we can edit this. So let's go to logo, make this bigger, for example. Also, we can scale this if my logo is not displayed correctly. Yeah, and now you can see the repetition. And if you don't want this, you can set the texture extension to clip. That means it will be cut off on the sides. You can't see this in the viewport, sadly, but if you hit render, you can only see this logo once. And if you want to delete a UV map, simply select this in this list here and hit the minus button. Tip number 19, draw other objects. Sometimes you want to create one texture for multiple objects. And there's a very simple way to show UV maps of two objects. For example, I select this fox here, then with shift the eye, then let's switch to edit mode. And here we can see the UV map, but we can't see the UV map of the fox. So I press N. And here under display, I enable draw other objects. And if you can't see the other UV map, you maybe have to switch to all under filter. And I also had trouble if all the objects already have materials. So if this doesn't show up, you have to remove the materials. So, and now I can select this and place it somewhere here. And now I can use one texture for both objects. And before you go down to the comments and write, there's an add-on for this, wait to the next tip. Tip number 20, Texture Atlas add-on. So same case as before, we want to use one texture for multiple objects, but in this case, we also want to edit both UV maps at the same time. And this is possible using the Texture Atlas add-on. I press Control alt u to open up the user preferences, go to add-ons, and here I search for text, enable the texture atlas and we will find it under properties render. Save user settings if you want to keep this texture atlas add-on enabled. And now down here under render, we find this texture atlas. Now let's select all the objects, press plus. Okay, now you can change the resolution and so on, but I simply want to go to start manual unwrap. Now, as you can see, with all the selected objects, I can now switch to edit mode and edit all the UV maps at the same time. As you can see, I now can change the eyes if I like. And when I'm done, I press finish manual unwrap. And now if I take a look into the eyes, you can see this UV map is now updated. Yeah, pretty easy, huh? Okay, I've lied at the beginning. This video not only contains 20 tips, it contains 21 tips. <laughs> so here's a bonus tip for you. Tip number 21, selecting islands in the 3D view. This tip is not really related to creating UV maps, but after you've created UV maps and placed all the seams on your object, you can do one cool thing. If I switch to edit mode, and have, for example, vertex or edge selection, this does not work. If I now press L, you can see simply the whole connected mesh will be selected. Same thing for edge selection. But if we enable face selection and I hit L, you can see it only selects the mesh, which is an actual effect one island. 
So if I add the UV image editor, you can see now only this body island is selected. And if I hit L over the head, you can see only the head island is selected. You can hit L multiple times to add more islands to the selections. So simply move your mouse cursor over the faces, press L. This is everything. And I find this really helpful if you are in, for example, texture paint or weight paint mode and just want to restrict the area on which you can paint. So let's switch to texture paint mode, for example. Here we can see the texture of this dinosaur. And if I enable this button down here, I'm able to select faces with right click or shift right click for multiple. And the same thing here, if I press L over the head, for example, only the head island will be selected. And now I can draw on this object and I don't can paint on the not selected areas. And the same thing for weight paint mode. If you are, for example, skinning your object while wigging, you can restrict the areas. So you just select the islands on which you want to paint and then you can paint only on this islands as you can see. Pretty helpful, right? And yeah, that's the last tip. But before you see my face again, just a short question. For what topic you would like to see another of these tip videos here? I had in mind, for example, wigging and skinning, retopology, texture painting, shading. So tell me in the comments what you would like to see next. Ah, and before I forget, you can download this little creature, wigged, shaded and textured down below in the video description for free. Yeah, and you can use it for whatever you want. But keep in mind, this was created in a workshop, so it's not perfect. The rig is not perfect, the shaders and textures are not perfect, but who cares? <laughs> Have fun with the model. Yeah, guys, that's it with this video. I hope you liked it and learned a few things. If so, tell your friends about it and more important, share this video. Share it across the whole internet if you like. By the way, do you also have struggled to learn something new or want to improve your 3D skills or digital 2D painting skills? If so, then our weekly CG challenge could be something for you. You can join this challenge completely for free without registrating anywhere. On Facebook if you like, you can join the group and meet a lot of other cool artists and you can win some great prizes. If you want to learn more about this, check out weeklycgchallenge.com. Yeah, as mentioned at the beginning, if you want to support my channel so that I can produce more videos like this in the future, then check out my Gumroad page. The link is in the video description below. Also, if you want to get notified in the future about the stuff I'm doing, check out my newsletter. The link is also in the video description. Thanks a lot for watching and we see us in the next video. Goodbye. <laughs>
This video was not sponsored by any of the things I mentioned here. The links to this are in the video description if you like to check them out. And yeah, that's it with this video. And now let's vendor something in real time. Ha <laughs> ha.